As sanctions by international activist groups against Israel intensify, the regime in Tel Aviv has taken extraordinary measures to attack activists seeking to peacefully protest Israel's illegal actions against the Palestinian people. Tel Aviv is accusing the BDS movement of terrorism. Just what is the BDS? BDS or Boycott Divestment Sanctions has three stated goals. One, ending the Israeli occupation and colonization of Palestinian territories. Two, recognizing the rights of Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. And three, allowing Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties as underlined in UN Resolution 194. The movement formed in 2005 shortly after Israel began a construction of an illegal apartheid wall inside Palestinian territories. BDS has become an umbrella group consisting of hundreds of activists and similar groups across the world and its members include Israelis as well. It has grown to an international movement with many celebrity supporters including American comedian John Stewart, American actress Meg Ryan, American actress Whoopi Goldberg, British singer and songwriter Zayn Malik, and American singer Selena Gomez are just a few of the many on a long and growing list of supporters of Palestinian rights. This is not only causing bad media for Israel and its policies, but it's also costing Tel Aviv between 1.4 and 4.7 billion US dollars every year according to the US think tank, the Rand Corporation. In fact, according to the World Bank, also based in the U.S., exports of Israeli goods have decreased by 24% because of the ongoing boycott by the BDS and its affiliates. Israel recognizes the BDS as a strategic threat to its existence because Israel is already boycotted by most of its Arab neighbors in the first place and now the international boycott by supporters of Palestine is hitting Israel hard. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu makes it clear every chance he gets that his regime is targeting those who are boycotting Israel. Numbers, you remember people talked about Israel's isolation? Remember that? Israel's isolation? Pretty soon, the countries that don't have relations with us, they're gonna be isolated. There are those who talk about boycotting Israel, we'll boycott them. And indeed, that is the case. Israel recently caused an international uproar after American citizen and activist Lara al Qasim, who was detained in Israel upon arrival in Tel Aviv simply for being accused of supporting a Palestinian led boycott campaign against Israel. Israel's Minister of Public Security, Gilad Erdan, believes that Lara was dangerous for Israel even though she had a valid student visa from the Israeli embassy in Washington. Laura uh, was uh, the head of uh, one of the most extremist BDS organizations known as SGSJP, Students for Justice in Palestine. And this is a BDS organization, anti-Semitic BDS organization that is acting against uh, pro-Israel speakers that is bullying and trying to uh, harm uh, Jewish students in many campuses around the United States of America. And this is exactly uh, one of the most extreme, extremist uh, BDS organizations that we don't want to see their activists coming to Israel and trying to use our infrastructure to harm us and to destroy us. As far as the international support and outcry for Lara is concerned, the minister used a tactic that U.S. President Donald Trump is notorious for, blame the media. The word media most of the time is against the state of Israel. We know it, we will try always to expose the truth and to tell uh, the truth about what is really happening uh, in Israel, but unfortunately it's not always 
working because the the world media many time uh, are against the state of Israel and that is not something that has to tell us to change our ideology or to change our mind. Laura's lawyer had something totally different to say. She blamed Israel's new law that targets any nationality peacefully protesting against Israel. Laura's case is critical because we learn from it how the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Strategic Affairs has been implementing the boycott um, amendment to the law on entering into Israel and how they intend to implement it in the future. The law itself is actually quite ambiguous. It says that a person who, um, acting on their own behalf or on behalf of an organization or body to, uh, for a public call to boycott or who has made a commitment to boycott, I don't know what a commitment to boycott is. That's something that's very unclear. Before she was allowed to finally enter Israel, Lara had to renounce BDS, according to her lawyer. Respect to um, Minister Erdogan's statement, um, he's asked that Lara claim that BDS is an illegitimate movement, that it's an illegitimate form of protest. Um, Lara is not willing to to claim uh, that BDS is illegitimate, even if she isn't a supporter of BDS. Lara was a victim of a relatively new legislation passed by the Israeli Knesset or parliament against the BDS and other activist groups. It is known as Amendment Number 27 to the Entry into Israel Law, and it bans the entry into Israel of any foreigner who makes a public call for boycotting Israel or any area under its control, a reference to the illegal settlements. The legislation caused public outcry from BDS supporters and other activists who say that the law will only mean more trouble for Palestinians and their supporters. The most recent accomplishment by the BDS group is the decision by Airbnb, the online accommodation bookings website, to stop listing properties in unlawful Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank. Even Human Rights Watch welcomed the decision. The decision was taken by Airbnb because it was the only way they could comply with their responsibilities under the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. It was not tenable to be facilitating rentals on land stolen from Palestinians who are not able to stay there. The BDS movement is leading an academic, cultural, and economic boycott against Israel. Israelis are feeling the brunt of this international boycott led by activism on them. In fact, 41% of Israelis think anyone calling for boycott should be denied entry into Israel, according to a survey by Mitvim, the Israeli Institute for Regional Foreign Policies. According to a partially redacted Israeli government report, the boycott divestment and sanctions movement could cost Israel potentially up to $11.5 billion a year, much higher than originally, as the momentum of activism against Israel's maltreatment of Palestinians and its neighbors grows. Tel Aviv cannot help but to go after the activists targeting them not only in Israel, but across the world. After all, Israel, according to Israeli officials, is facing a threat that is more challenging to its existence than ever.